The real story of global culinary tradition can be found in the kitchens of everyday women cooking for their families. So much so that I wrote a book about it, featuring grandmothers from different African countries sharing traditional recipes from their homeland. Now I want to share my take on some of these classic African dishes for you to enjoy. Welcome to Hawa at Home. Hi everyone, I'm Hawa Hassan and today I'm going to be making a sweet and sour braised lamb with tamarind. This recipe is in my cookbook in Bibi's Kitchen and was inspired by the Cape Malay people of South Africa. They're originally from Indonesia and were brought there uh, by the Dutch. I'd fallen in love with them while I was there. I used to live on a street called Long Street, which was very close to their community. They're a group of Muslim people, so I felt right at home with them. I lived in Cape Town when I was about 25, and I really had fallen in love with the country and the cuisine. Lamb is used often in stews, in kebabs. It is eaten every day. People in South Africa are really big on meat. It's something that they have access to. Also, I'm going to be using a tamarind. Tamarind is a fruit that is tangy and a little sweet. It's a very, very dark brown. It adds a ton of flavor to your food. Tamarind's also indigenous to the wetlands of West Africa. It's something that we use in Somali cooking often. It's something that I use in my sauce. So, let's get this recipe on the road. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn our oven to 300. I'm gonna use just a tablespoon of oil. This recipe is gonna take us about an hour, hour and a half to make, just depending on your oven. You wanna make sure you make the lamb until it's really tender. Just turn this to medium heat. This sweet braised tamarind lamb is really special because of the way that it's made. It's just a one pot meal that you throw in together, put in the oven and kind of forget about. Here we go. So I've got about two pounds of lamb. I'm going to be using bone in lamb shoulders. Just gonna put a little salt on this, then I'm gonna go ahead and brown our lamb. I think one of the main things I've learned about from making lamb is that it's really important to go to a great butcher. Welcome to Paisanos. Thank you. So, and if you're not able to go to a great butcher, it is very important to know where your lamb comes from. love to come to the butcher and find lean cuts of meat, beautifully prepared steaks. Also, you know how fresh the meat is as opposed to the supermarket. So I really encourage if you've got a great, great butcher by you, make friends with the guys and the gals there. I often find myself here getting my New Zealand lamb. I absolutely adore um, the fact that they carry it and that I have it right here. So I like to cook New Zealand lamb. And that for me is because New Zealand lamb is grass fed and less gamey, um, so it's much more tender. I'm just using a little bit of kosher salt. So I'll brown this on both sides for about five minutes and then put it to the side and then get our aromatics going. I've got a yellow onion and a few garlic cloves. Yeah, this is perfect. This is exactly where I want it. I think that oftentimes people have a misconception about lamb and how hard it is to cook and get very afraid of it. But, you know, it gets a bad rep and it's a very, very easy, uh, meat to make, especially if you get comfortable with it. I would say that it's not as gamey as most people assume it is. If you're searing it or if you're braising it, make sure that you set a timer. Um, I would also advise you to get a cut that is right for you. And I would also say cutting against the grain is a, a tip that I would give to somebody who is trying lamb. So while I wait for that to brown on the other side, I'm gonna start chopping one yellow onion, and I wanna chop this finely. So 
So I know as an East African, I'm always joking about red onions versus yellow onions, but you know, in this part of the Indian Ocean, they do not use a red onion as much as we do in the East. So the recipe does call for a yellow onion. Please use a yellow onion. There's already enough flavor and a lot going on with the lamb, and you don't want to take that away. All right, let's check on our little people here. Okay, this is great. So I'm going to brown our last lamb, and then we'll move on to cooking all of our aromatics in here. You don't need to use a different skillet. This is more than fine. While that gets going, I'll get my garlic together. So I lived in South Africa when I was 25. It was the first country I visited after coming to the US in 1993. I call it really my formative years. I left New York and I was there for about six months. It was the experience of a lifetime. I met some of my bestest friends and I did things I never thought I would do. It's still one of my favorite places to vacation. It's a place that I like to call home and I'm really, really looking forward to returning. I think a lot of South Africans, what I saw when I was there was that it almost was reflective of Somali foods in the way that they ate their meat, you know, whether it was the, the goat, lamb, um, lots of beef. They did a lot of grilling. They ate a lot of lean proteins while I was there. All right, so this is also done. In the same pan, I'm going to go ahead and combine our onion and our garlic. What really does make this dish special is that you're using just one skillet or one, one Dutch oven the whole time. You put it together, you bring it together, and you just forget it. I'm gonna give it about five minutes for the onions to soften, and then I'll go ahead and throw in our tamarind, bay leaves, light brown sugar, and then our spices. That's, for me, the fun part of this whole recipe. So now that my onions have begun to soften, I'm going to go ahead and throw in our spices. We've got nutmeg, allspice, and whole cloves. I'm also going to use some bay leaves. So here we go. I'm just gonna throw in four whole cloves. You can never have too many cloves. I'll do a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Oh, that smells incredible. And a half a teaspoon of allspice. Mmm, so fragrant. So the Ned Mag and allspice are going to add a warming heat to the sour and sweetness of the lamb, and they'll offset the tamarind. So I'm going to go ahead and get our tamarind and our bay leaves. I'm just gonna do three tablespoons of tamarind. In this recipe that I often make at home when I run out of tamarind, I substitute lemon juice to get that same sourness to act as a tamarind. I also sometimes substitute um, sherry vinegar. Also works like magic in terms of acting like tamarind. This is more than what the recipe calls for, but I do like my lamb really, really sour and sweet. Really a recipe that a lot of the people make there for, um, whether it's for Eid or for Ramadan. Now I'm gonna put in two tablespoons of light brown sugar. Come on, sweetness. Oh, I can already smell the sourness. I'm going to combine this together. So I've added just plain water. You don't need to add stock to this recipe. It is so flavorful on its own. Two bay leaves. 
babies. This is a recipe that comes together quickly, but it's a crowd pleaser. So you can make it ahead of time, or you know, you can make it as you're getting ready for work and have it that evening. Here goes our lamb. And now we're at a place where I can fit all of them back into our skillet. This is the good stuff. Do not let that go to waste. So again, I'm gonna put this in the oven at 300 for about an hour, hour and a half. You wanna check on it occasionally. Give it a stir. You will have yourself a meal and be straight transported to South Africa. It's one of those dishes where you can literally put it all together and then just leave it. So when I was 25, I was really drawn to South Africa. I just had always felt drawn to the music of South Africa. I had grown up listening to um, Maryam Makiba, who we call Mama Africa. You know, that was always blaring at home. And when I got there, I just felt like I was at home. Another thing that I have taken away from my time there has been rooibos tea. I love rooibos tea. I drink it every single day. It's a tree that is indigenous to South Africa. Um, it's almost like chai on steroids. It's like this earthy, soul-warming, almost reddish brown tea that I still order from South Africa. I have it shipped to me, even though it's available here in the US. That's something that I've taken away and that is a big part of my day-to-day -day life. So it's been about an hour and change. I'm gonna go ahead and check on our lamb. All I'm looking for is for the lamb to have kind of fallen off the bone. Oh yeah, I can already smell the tamarind. Ready guys? That looks perfect. So I know it's tender because you could see that the meat has moved away from the bone. Go ahead and, oh yeah, see? It's completely fallen off the bone with no help from me. And you know what? This is a recipe that works well if you double it, if you make it in a big batch, and it gets better as the days go. So you can keep it in the refrigerator for up to a week. You can smell the sourness of the tamarind and the sweetness of the light brown sugar. tamarind, nutmeg, and allspice. Oddly enough, when they cook down like this, begin to smell alike. And you can see the fat of the lamb reflected here in the juice. This is such a simple dish. I'm gonna serve it with just basmati rice and simple greens. You don't have to get complicated. It's already such a flavorful dish on its own. So I like to keep it light. Oh, I am really looking forward to this. I'll just make a bed of basmati rice. Tender. That was incredible. Immediately, the sourness of the tamarind jumps out at me, and right after follows the brown sugar. It's sweet, it's sour. It's got this back of the mouth tanginess. The nutmeg and the allspice have really come alive. This is an incredibly easy meal. I know I said this is a crowd pleaser, but what I really meant is it's a howl pleaser. I hope you try this at home. <laughs>